Welcome back everyone. In this video we're doing area between curves integrating dy. If you haven't checked out our other video uh, first where we introduce the concept of finding area between curves integrating dx, I recommend to check that out first. Um, a little bit uh, easier to get in on that video. So here we're going to be looking at integrating dy. I have a line and a parabola. When we integrated dx, remember that that meant our rectangle was skinny in the x direction and so it ran up and down. It was long in the y direction and skinny in the x direction. So dx had the rectangle running this way. dy will be a small amount of y. So it's long in the x direction and skinny in the y direction. So when we're integrating dy, I will run my rectangle horizontally through my region that is bounded between the two curves. So I have the end over here and the end over here. And in uh, dx integration, we did top minus bottom for our length of the rectangle. For this one, we want to look at Again, the big value minus the small value. The right side is the bigger value of x, and the left side is the smaller value of x. So when we do our area between curves and we do it dy, with the rectangle running left and right, we will be integrating the right function minus the left function dy and of course remember that now a and b and you'll have some classes where they'll call it c and d instead of a and b and that's fine i'm just going to keep calling it a and b uh, these are going to be y bounds now because you're integrating dy so that's going to be a y equals value and a y equals value there if we're integrating dy the other thing that we want to notice that changes these are no longer going to be functions of x. If we're integrating dy, these need to be formulas in terms of y only. So we want this to be a function of y and this to be a function of y. So we'll want our formulas to have y as the variable when we integrate. Okay, so looking at this, if it's right minus left, you can see that the line here is the right edge of where the rectangle hits. So that's y equals x minus 1, except I can't put x minus 1 in for my right function because it's not in terms of y. I need to arrange this so I have a formula of y only, which means I need to solve it for x. So if I add 1 to both sides, I get an equivalent statement x is y plus 1. Now I have a formula for the line just with y on one side, and that's what we'll use. So we'll start off by saying area equals integral. We'll come back and do our bounds later. So our right formula is going to be y plus 1 minus, and then our left formula, the left side, no matter where you draw the rectangle, is the parabola. And the parabola is already solved for x, so we're just going to go ahead and put that in. Make sure you put the y part in. So 2y squared will be our left boundary, dy, and so these are y bounds. This bottom one here is going to be the smallest or the lowest value of y. So if I look at the lowest point, that is even with negative half on the y-axis. And if I look at the top point, which is up here, and I go over to the y-axis because it's dy, that's at positive 1. So y equals 1. So my bounds are negative 1 half to 1. Now I can just do the integration. Um, this is focusing on area between curves, um, so I'm just going to do the integral, uh, the integration, and then I'm just going to let you guys go ahead and solve uh, by plugging in if you would like. So if I integrate this, I will get integral of y is y squared over 2. Integral of 1 would be y minus 2y squared, so that would be y squared would become y cubed over 3 for the power rule, so I would get actually 2 thirds y cubed. Um, I would plug in my bounds, and remember you always plug in the top bound first, right? So I'm going to go ahead and write what this is, and then I'll let you do the arithmetic on your own if you like. So if I plug in 1, that will give 1 half plus 1 minus two-thirds times one cubed is just going to stay one. So we get one times two-thirds there. Minus, now we'll plug in a half, so uh, sorry, negative half. So negative times negative would be positive. 
half times a half is one fourth divided by another two would be one eighth. Just plug that in for y there, so we get minus a half. And then here, uh, cubed, so negative times negative times negative would be negative, but I have a minus in the front, so that's plus. Um, I get one on the top and I get an eight on the bottom. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this unsimplified. Um, and so then you can work the rest of this out on your own. I believe the area for this one is 9 over 8 as an answer in the end. And since it's area, remember, do units cubed. So I know I skipped a bunch of stuff at the end here, but I don't. the, the video is not about actually doing arithmetic with fractions. It is about getting our integral dy worked out. Okay, looking at another one, we're going to find the area bounded by y equals 0. So that's the, actually the axis and the square root, which is the curvy thing here, and y equals x minus 2, which is the line with some slope there. So it looks like this is the bottom, and this is our right side here, and this kind of curves around the left side on the top, and so this is our region that we want to find the area of. If we're integrating dy, I'm going to draw my rectangle through the region and just make some notes of where that happens. So you'll notice that uh, the right side is the y equals x minus 2 line, and the left side of where it hits is the y equals square root x. So this is my f of y, this is my g of y. And we'll go ahead and set that up. So area is going to equal integral. I'll come back and do my bounds at the end. So right minus left if we're doing uh, dy. So now here, think about, I can't put in, if I'm doing dy, I can't put in x minus 2 because that's not a formula again in terms of y. So I need to resolve this. I need to think of this as x equals y plus 2. So y plus 2 will go in for my right function minus my left function. So my left function here, I can't put in square root x because it needs to be in terms of y. So if I want to solve this for x, I would need to square both sides. So that's going to give us x equals y squared. So y squared is what will go in here. And again, we did that because we are integrating dy. Everything in here needs to be in terms of y. Now go back and find your bounds. Remember it's dy, so they need to be y bounds. So we look at what is the lowest y value. The lowest y value happens on this line, right? Everywhere on this line would be where y equals zero. So that's our lower bound for y. And our upper bound is the top point, this highest point here. If you go all the way over to the axis through my writing here, you'll see it's at y equals two. So from zero to two, we have this integral. All right, so we'll work it out now. The area is going to equal the antiderivative of y, again, y squared over two, antiderivative of two, dy is gonna be two y, resist the temptation to say two x. Here, power rule again, minus, just like the last one, y cubed over three. Our bounds are zero to two. And so when we do our area, we will first plug in two, so we'll get two squared, which is four over two. That's 2 plus 2 times 2 would give us 4 in the next term. And then plugging in 2, we'll cube 2, that's th 8, 8 over 3, so we'll have minus 8 thirds. Minus, and now here's something a little bit easier, right? If I plug in 0, this term becomes 0, and the next term becomes 0, and the next term becomes 0, because they all have 0 in them. So we just get a bunch of zeros. That one's not too bad. So here we get 6 minus 8 thirds. We'll go ahead and finish this one. That is, if you get a common denominator here, 18 thirds minus 8 thirds. So that's going to give us 10 thirds. And of course, units squared as well. Okay, let's look at one more. Here, I've already got everything in terms of x equals, so that's nice. We don't have any adjusting to do. Um, my region is between these here. That is the bounded area in the middle here. And I'm going to go ahead and draw my rectangle horizontally, as we have been doing. So this one here, the 3 plus 2y minus y square is my right function. The 3y plus y square is the left function. So we'll do right minus left. And this one will work out as integral. 
of the right function 3 plus 2y minus y squared minus the left function which is 3y plus y squared and again we didn't have to move anything around because all of these formulas were already solved for x equals everything in terms of y so we're good to go we need to go and check our bounds um, it looks like this lower bound might be negative one and a half that's probably it if we're not sure then we would want to figure out this intersection point by setting these equal to each other and solving right so if you're not sure what that y value is then you would need to go ahead and say 3y plus y squared is equal to 3 plus 2y minus y squared and solve those and that will give you the bounds our intuition here once you solve that you will see is correct that this is actually negative one and a half or negative three halves and then this top value here would be this point so that's our upper bound and that's even with one that one's pretty easy to see i think no matter what there so that's our setup i would go ahead and combine any like terms before you do the integral that's what i might do you don't have to that's a lot of terms and it might be nice to not have to plug into that many terms um, so the three is the only constant term uh, y terms i have two y minus three y um, so that's going to be minus y and then negative y square minus another y square would be minus two y squared dy i think that's a little better it's less to worry about integrating and plugging in so we'll go with that we'll do the antiderivative part now so we get antiderivative of three in terms of y is three y minus antiderivative of y y squared over two here i get y cubed over three again so i'll put the three under the two and then we would plug in our bounds remember you'll plug in the top bound one first you'll plug in negative three second in summary when you're integrating dy to find area between curves remember instead of top minus bottom it's going to be right function minus the left function when you're integrating dy remember these are y bounds so you need to find y values for those not x values um, if it's y values then a is going to be the lowest point in the region and b is going to be the highest point in the region so lowest value and highest value um, and remember your functions have to be in terms of y so you got to have some y stuff here and you got to have some y stuff here if you have some x's in here that's not really what we uh what we want to do at this point in calculus you might do that later in the next semester class but while we're learning to do it here we need everything in terms of y for integrating dy okay good luck looking at dy integrals Check out our next video where it discusses how to decide whether to integrate something dx or dy.